everybody. My name is Homer and I'm an account manager here at StorageCraft and it's my pleasure today to be going through a demonstration of how to migrate from a physical to a virtual environment with you. Now guys, before we get started, if I could just get someone to type in the questions area that they can see my screen and can hear me clearly, that would be fantastic. Excellent. Alright guys, so without further ado, we'll get into the demonstration. So the solution that we use for our physical to virtual migration is called Head Start Restore. And today I'm going to be demonstrating to you how easy it is to set up a Head Start Restore job. And I'll also show you um, how to finalize a Head Start Restore job. So what I'll do to begin with guys is I'll open up Image Manager. Now what Image Manager is guys, it's a free download with Shadow Protect. It's strongly recommended to be used in conjunction with Shadow Protect. It's actually the console that we use for all of our verification, our consolidation, our retention policies. We also use it for our site-to-site -site replication as well as our cloud services. And it's also the console that we use for Head Start Restore. Okay. So there's really two most common reasons for using the Head Start Restore solution. So the first most common reason would be as an enterprise level disaster recovery solution as a standby virtual server. So let's say for example you wanted to have a standby server to take over if your primary server failed. Now what you would do using Head Start Restore is you would have your production server generating continuous incremental backups just like schedule. You would then configure a Head Start Restore solution to automatically restore those incremental backup images into a virtual machine file. Now say for example your production server fails for any reason, you would finalize the Head Start Restore job. You would then use the recovery environment to apply any remaining incremental images to the virtual machine file, sorry, to the virtual machine, and then bring it online as a replacement for the failed production server. Now that's the first most common reason to be using the Head Start Restore solution. The second most common reason is why we're here today for, say for example, physical to virtual server migrations or any type of virtual server migration. Now say for example you needed to migrate a server to a new virtual machine environment, but obviously nobody wants to be offline for say three days whilst they're migrating their data for example. Okay, so what do we do in this scenario? Well, you keep the old server running and generating incremental backups while you begin a Head Start Restore job of the same backup chain into a virtual machine file. Now, what happens is over time the Head Start Restore job catches up to the most current incremental, at which point you can then take the old server offline in, in off hours and then apply the final incremental backup to the new server and bring the new system online very quickly. But let's actually go through the process and let's actually set one of these jobs up. So what I'll do here is I will add a new Head Start Restore job here. Fantastic. So you'll notice on the right hand side here we've got our file types. So say for example we were migrating into a VMware environment, we would obviously choose VMDK. If we were moving into a Hyper-V environment we would choose VHD. And just as a heads up guys, we are also about to release a version of Image Manager that's going to be supporting VHDX. Now we also have an additional option which is volume which now supports Head Start Restore into an empty NTFS volume, so that's that one there. Okay, so for the first demonstration let's say that we wanted to migrate our say physical exchange server into a VMware environment. So I'll give it a name of HSR into VMware, fantastic. I've chosen VMDK as my file type. Okay, for destination, so you can see here we can choose between local, We've got network drive options and straight into an ESX or ESXi server. For this example, I'll just choose local. In my location, I already have a pre-selected folder called Head Start Restore Volume. And I'll just create a subdirectory and I'll call it VMware. Fantastic. Okay, so now just on this bottom panel here, guys, lag time. This is quite important. So what the lag time is, it's the difference between the Shadow Protect incremental image being created and it being applied to the Head Start Restore job. Now, what's the reason of setting a lag time? Well, say for example, we had our Exchange server and there was a corruption or an error occurred. Well, we want to give ourselves a lag time so that it doesn't get pushed across immediately into the Head Start Restore job. So for this first example, I'll set ourselves a lag time of say four hours. Now, I'll come across to Head Start Restore volume. I'll choose my volume. I'll hit OK and I'll hit Save. 
So we can see here it's now in the process of it'll first restore our full base image and then it'll continue to restore our incremental images, ensuring that we are always four hours behind. So what I'll do now, guys, I will minimize my Image Manager console. I'll come to the Start menu, I'll open Windows Explorer, and I'll come to my iDrive here, my BDR, so my Backup and Disaster Recovery Drive here. This is where I'm storing a lot of my backups. I'll come into the Head Start Restore volume. I'll choose the option for VMware. And we'll notice here, there's our file type, and that's continuously growing at the moment as it's restoring the base. It'll continue to grow as we start to restore our incremental images as well. So there's our file type there, so I just thought I'd show you that. I'll minimize that, and I'll come back to my Image Manager console. Fantastic. So what I'll do now, guys, I'll add another, a new Head Start Restore job, and I'll do it into a VHD format for you. So I'll go, we'll make the file, and we'll make the name Head Start Restore into Hyper-V. I will choose my file type as VHD. We'll notice now we've got local and network, so obviously our ESX or ESXi server option has been removed because we're moving to a VHD file type now. I'll choose Head Start Restore Volumes. I'll call this one Hyper-V. And let's say, for example, I'll set ourselves a day lag time for this one. I'll choose my volume, hit OK, and hit Save. So there we can see we're now in the process of restoring our base image for our Head Start Restore job into a Hyper-V environment, so into a VHD file type. And again, I will minimize this. I will come back here, and we can notice here, in the Hyper-V, we've then got our VHD file type. Again, that is continuing to grow. So as you can see, guys, very easy to set up the Head Start Restore job. So what I have prepared, guys, as you can see here, there's a Head Start Restore job that I prepared earlier. I'll go into this Head Start Restore job. So the first thing I want you to notice is that for this particular one, um, for the demo, I have set ourselves a lag time of one hour. Now, my schedule for this particular managed folder, so my Exchange 2013 server folder, which I'm managing here, is every 15 minutes. So essentially, I'm four incrementals behind. So one tick, I'll cancel out of that. And what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to finalize this particular Head Start Restore job. So I'll click the Finalize button there. Now, you'll notice that it gives me a few recovery points here. Now, the reason it gives you those few recovery points is, again, if there's a virus or a corruption of, say, our 445 incremental, we might want to choose 430. Now, automatic, by default, it automatically picks the most recent backup image, so it's going to be choosing my 5 p.m. one. For this demo, I will choose that one as well. I'll hit finalize. It's going to prompt me and say, would you like to choose that recovery point? Yes, I would in this scenario. So you'll notice here, it is now in the process of restoring. It's pushing in these final four incremental images which I had. So I had restored up until the 22nd incremental. Now I'm going to push my 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th incrementals into this Head Start Restore job. And then essentially we would have our file type created. Now, because we are discussing physical to virtual migration, you would then need to run a hardware independent restore to successfully migrate to the new virtual machine file. And then essentially you are good to go. So you can see here for this particular one, we are now finalized. So guys, that pretty much covers off the demonstration of Head Start Restore and migrating from physical to virtual environments. Now, I hope you find the demonstration informative, and thank you very much for your attendance.